This is The Fit Mess with Zach and Jeremy. Hi there. Welcome to the show where this week we will once again be discussing the many benefits of CBD, how it can benefit your uh, struggles with anxiety, struggles with depression, and it can even help with weight loss, which was uh, brand new and very surprising information to me. We will do all of that with our guest. Her name is Brooke Alpert. She is a certified holistic cannabis practitioner, nationally recognized nutrition expert and best-selling author. Her website, dailyhabitcbd.com. We will talk to her about all of that in just a moment. CBD is something that I've used for a long time to manage my own, uh, my depression issues. I use it to help regulate my sleep cycle. Uh, it, it is a very powerful tool in, in all of that. I know, Zach, in the past, you've, you've used it to some degree for that as well. Yeah, I've experimented with it for anxiety reasons. It's got a natural, as we'll, we'll hear in the interview, it's got a natural calming effect on the body. I've only ever used it for spot treatments, right? Mm -hmm. Though, like where I'm having an anxious moment or I want to fall asleep quicker. So I would take a dose of CBD to relax myself for the moment. Although you'll hear in the interview, what I hadn't thought of before was like regularly dosing with it for a week to 10 days. Yeah to see like what kind of impact that has on your nervous system and how it calms you down to the point where the rest of your body can start healing. So that, that I haven't quite experimented with yet. Yeah. And the concept of, of using it for weight loss is fascinating to me as well, because, you know, if you listen to our last episode, you heard that my diet has been off the rails. And so, uh, and it's largely related to stress. And as we'll find out here in just a minute, stress can be a, a huge part of any weight management struggle. And I've been under a tremendous amount of stress lately. Just we've, we're looking at possibly moving. There's just a lot of stuff going on at home. And so I, I know that I'm falling back on some old habits of, of eating poorly, eating late and again, early and often and not good. And things. everywhere in the middle, and right? everywhere in the middle. <laughs> so any help I can get to, to manage, uh, the stress that is driving some poor choices is, is going to be very valuable. And, and there's a lot of ways that you can do it. For a long time, I was using like a little, like a little vape pen uh, thing to help me sleep. You can use tinctures. You can put it in your food. You can put it in your coffee. It's, it's just, it's remarkable. And, you know, and I do some work on the side with uh, some other cannabis related companies. And I'm always blown away at how many things CBD can treat, how many different ways it is used to manage pain, to manage anxiety, to manage now weight loss. It just, it really seems to be like this miracle drug, for lack of a better word, that can just benefit so many people in so many ways. And then there's people like me that have so many ways within one body that it can actually help with. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the list, but like the list of CBD things, it's like anxiety, depression, migraines, fibromyalgia, like it's incredible, really is incredible, like how much this one thing can do. Yeah. So many benefits, so many things to talk about. I don't want to waste any time. Let's get right into our interview with Brooke Alpert. We started talking with her about how she discovered CBD could be so beneficial and why she decided to make it such a personal journey to make sure more people could experiment with it. I'm a registered dietitian by training, and I've had a private practice in New York City for about 15 years now. Um, and my specialty was weight loss, health and wellness. And, you know, I, I was good at what I did. Um, and I've written books and, you know, I really was this sort of like weight loss expert on the Upper East Side of New York where we live. But while I was helping all of my patients, my husband at home was not doing very well. And so Todd suffers from um, a debilitating autoimmune disease. It, it's got a fancy term, which is autoimmune peripheral neuropathy, which is basically just means like your hands and your feet and all your peripherals really hurt. And so being married to a dietitian, this poor guy, I really tortured him. So I, I would bring him, you know, to any new doctor that I would meet, you know, if I was at a conference and I was inspired by someone or like, and I, you know, was introduced to someone new, like I, this guy was like a human pin cushion. I was bringing him to anybody I could meet. And then, um, I would put him on any diet, you know, so right away it was like gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, fun-free. Um, and then, I started doing more research and I eventually he ended up on something called the walls protocol, which is uh, a diet that's meant for people who are suffering from MS and it's super restrictive and super intense. It's like paleo on steroids. And he was basically eating red cabbage and liver 
by mm. <laughs> the end of it. And um, so he basically broke up with me as his dietitian. And, you know, I, and like my joke is um, that I almost would have rather that he said he wanted to see other people than like not follow <laughs> a diet. <laughs> Because like, you know, watching your partner, you know, he's the father of our children, like, you know, I'm seeing like this person who I love and care about struggle and suffer. And it is really hard to not want to try to fix them. But so he fired me. And um, I started scheming a little bit, really just trying to give him a break. But I really just stumbled across an article um, in one of the journals I was reading about CBD and pain and PTSD, both of which he struggles with. And so I found a, a brand that I thought I could trust and I gave him some CBD and I said, look, eat whatever you want, just take this and let's just see. And he's like, well, what is it? And I'm like, I don't know much about it. It's made from pot. And then he was like, this is sweet. I'm fine with that. And so like, <laughs> he's what we call cannabis friendly, which is really just like a polite term for, you know, pothead. Sure, um, sure. <laughs> so he was very open to it. And the coolest thing was within a month, I saw changes in him and he went ahead and taught our oldest girl, our oldest, oldest daughter, how to ride her bike, which like any parent knows is like this physical feat. Like even for those of us who are not ill. Yeah. So the only thing that had changed was CBD and that's where that light bulb really went off in my head. So let's, let's talk about what does happen to the, the body. What does CBD do to the body to help address pain issues? Sure. So when I saw what had happened with Todd, that's when I nerded out, you know, I, I'm a, a master's of science, like I am that science geek. So I went and enrolled and became a cannabis practitioner and studied for a year all about like the benefits of cannabis. But what CBD does specifically is that we in our body have like an endocannabinoid system called the ECS in which like makes me geek out beyond belief. But basically we have receptors all throughout our body that are meant to be absorbing and receiving CBD. When those receptors are hit with CBD, it helps the body like fix any imbalance, which is why we were joking before the show that CBD seems to fix everything. It's because any time, like the ultimate goal of the ECS in your body is to help your body maintain homeostasis. So if you think about anxiety, pain, sleep, um, and all the conditions that we've heard CBD being really good for, there's so, sort of like an imbalance in the body, right? So it's not like anxiety, like something's broken, right? There's something that's off kilter. And that's what CBD helps support the body to do. It's not CBD that fixes it. It's CBD that gives the body the adjustment it needs to sort of self-conquer the anxiety or to self-relieve the pain, um, reducing inflammation. So it, it triggers a system in the body to start working more effectively and efficiently. You, you hit the buzzword that uh, we've been talking a lot about here that a lot of people are talking about inflammation. This seems to be the, the cause of all of our problems, if not you know, many, many, many of them. How does CBD work to help us with inflammation? What does it actually do to inflammation to, to make our suffering less so? So CBD in itself is an anti-inflammatory component. Right. So, and all of the other nutrients that are in good quality CBD, especially a full spectrum, are all different, my, like micronutrients, phytonutrients, antioxidants, and more that all have components and properties that reduce inflammation in the body. So, that's why like CBD can be found in a topical, right? You can have patches, right? Like, I love, like, my daughter is a figure skater. So, I always have like a CBD cream in my bag for every time she falls. Like, right away, I'm like the medicine woman, like rubbing creams on her that stink. But the truth is, it really works very effectively. And so, you know, it helps with inflammation because all of the healing properties from the hemp plant are what drive that inflammation down. And once inflammation starts to reduce, the body can then sort of self heal. And that, that's really why, again, CBD has this broad um, target range. So is it kind of a double whammy in that sense and that CBD actually impacts your inflammation so that your body can heal and reduce the inflammation even more? It, exactly. And so not only is the CBD like helping your body to reduce the inflammation, but it's teaching your body and readjusting your body, sort of like a chiropractic adjustment so that you don't actually 
you know, need to be taking it over and over. So if you think about like a headache and you take like an Advil or a Tylenol, we're just sort of taking away the pain, but we're not getting to the root cause. So the cool thing about CBD is that it often addresses the root cause. And that's that, you know, why your body was off kilter or not in the, the perfect homeostasis that it should be. You mentioned that we were talking before the show about the broad range that CBD can address. You work specifically with weight loss and, and or managing weight with CBD. This is fascinating to me. I didn't know that this was something that could be done. I don't know why I'm surprised every time I hear that something new that CBD can do. Tell me a little bit about, about how CBD can, can benefit somebody trying to lose weight. Sure. So my, my first four, four way into um, CBD and weight loss was that I had a bunch of emotional eaters in my practice. And, you know, as I was studying and learning about CBD, it, it was like CBD and anxiety. Well, emotional eating is just sort of like a, a basically an undiagnosed form of anxiety, right? So it's, or it's a more mild form. Um, and so for a bunch of my clients who were these emotional eaters, so let's just say they were you know, working moms, they'd come home from the office, they'd feed their kids, the kids would go to sleep and they'd finally have their like me time, which often meant for a lot of them like raiding the kitchen. And like, that's when you dive into your kids' leftovers and the goldfish and like, trust me, all of us have at one point finished the mac and cheese out of the pot itself, not even putting it in a bowl, like eating it off the wooden spoon, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that stress <laughs> a lot of work. Do you have a camera in my kitchen? Is that, uh, is that what's <laughs> going on here? Yeah. And so I started trying to figure out like, you know, in my past, when it came to my emotional eaters, I would use every trick I ever thought of, I was ever taught in school, right? So we would journal, we would deal with our feelings, we would do, you know, we would do kitchen curfews, everything I could think of, right? We would plan ahead, only buy specific foods. And while it was helpful for some, there was a whole group of my patients that I could never really get an effective result with. And that's because I wasn't able to actually target the anxiety with something. I can't prescribe medication. So it, it just was something out of my wheelhouse until CBD. So with a lot of my clients who were emotional eaters, we were able to sort of prevent it from happening. So, you know, once you know your patients really well and you start knowing the times that the binges happen and, you know, as a patient yourself, you realize these are the hours that I tend to binge or these are the triggers for me. If we could be you know, proactive and taking some CBD ahead of time, a lot of that binge behavior wasn't necessary because they didn't have that anxiety that was brewing. And for a lot of my clients, what it would do was they would have like CBD before they would leave the office, they'd get home, they then realize they didn't need that glass of wine, right? And then we realized that often the wine was a trigger for allowing us to start the munchies, right? The, to start snacking. And that's when the, the ball would really start rolling that they wouldn't be able to stop. So, you know, by having CBD was a super cool tool that I could give to my patients to say, hey, let's be really smart and thoughtful about when we take this. And then we were able to see these positive benefits just sort of snowball off of each other. So you mentioned munchies. <laughs> and I just want to, I have a couple of questions around that because <laughs> it, when I was a teenager, that was a, a big bag of Oreos and pot was the thing that we loved to do because we, double stuffed? The pot. it was never double stuffed, oh, but we, we would, you know, always have the munchies. Out, Zach, that. You missed out. <laughs> I could only do with what, what with what my dad brought, brought home. But, um, so, but CBD is not THC, right? THC is the the psychotropic part. Um, I personally, myself, I don't like the feeling of, of being high. So I tend to steer, stay away from it, but tell me about CBD and the munchies and how that's not really a thing with CBD. Sure. So if we were to look at just cannabis as the plant as a whole, it gets, we have cannabis and then it's broken down into two actual plants. One is what we know as marijuana, right? It's, it's actually just known as cannabis. And the other plant is hemp. Now, the only difference between the two plants is the amount of THC. So in order for something to legally be called hemp, it has to have 0.3% THC or less. So a very small amount. And a lot of hemp that's grown in the States has basically zero because there's a lot of people that don't want any THC in their product. So 
The cannabis with THC is what we know for getting high, stoned, the munchies, all of the stereotypes that we have associated with it, right? And all that psychoactive effects where you would feel sort of heady from it. The amount of THC that's found in hemp is so minute that it actually doesn't have that effect. So you're not going to get stoned or high or get the munchies from a high quality CBD product. Mm -hmm. There can still be a small amount of that THC. So we only work with full spectrum hemp, which means that the, the CBD that we're using is full spectrum, meaning that it has all of the components and all of the, the, the cannabinoids, those properties from the plant, including THC. So even it's gonna have small amounts. No, even just that micro, micro, micro amount makes CBD more effective. So I like to think of like, there's, there's CBD who's sort of like the star of the show and all the other cannabinoids are like its backup dancers, right? It's known as the entourage effect. So one person singing is pretty cool, but when you've got like this full stage, right? With the lead singer and this entire backup of harmony, it's even cooler, right? So that's how I like to look at it. So a full spectrum plant will have 0.3% THC or less, but it'll also have all the other kind of annoyance that are in the plant. So CBD, CBG, CBN, all three letter you know, abbreviations. And they all work together and they make CBD even more effective. Now, if you are getting drug tested, you are too scared of THC or for whatever reason, you can get something called broad spectrum CBD, which is you have all the cool components, but zero THC, or you can get an isolate, which is just CBD. And there's, there's a reason for isolates for some people, for most, the majority of the people I work with, an isolate would never be something I'd recommend because the other components make CBD so much better. But when I have someone with like severe epilepsy um, or, or dealing with really, really severe issues where they need super high doses of CBD, the isolate's the easiest way to really boost up those numbers. Um, but for the average person, broad or full spectrum is the way to go. So we've talked about how CBD can address the sort of the underlying anxiety that can lead to eating issues. Uh, I've also read about something called THCV, which supposedly suppresses appetite. Do you know much about this? Well, you know, it's, it's funny. Yeah. So, so it's THCA, THCV, and all of it really refers to whether it's in the acid form. And so it's basically about whether it's been heated and processed that way. So like if you were just to get like a raw plant, it's not going to be as effective as if it was, if it was heated. So like if you were just to eat like a plain dried leaf, like, like something like this, <laughs> this happens to only be hemp. So, you know, no one needs to worry here. If you were to eat something like that without heating it, you'd get some benefits, but you're not, the, the THC won't affect you, right? So it's, it's the acid form that's like sort of like not as activated. So that the THCV, the funny thing is everyone always associates like, you know, people who use THC products or cannabis with um, the stereotype of like the munchies and lazy and eating. And yet the majority, like long-term studies have shown the majority of like heavy, you know, cannabis or pot users are actually of normal weight. So there, there is another component that whether it's the munchies don't affect, you know, whether it's a metabolism boost from the THCV or what. So there's a lot of new research that's emerging about THC in cannabis and actually its benefits for weight. We will use like for people who have, um, like for cancer patients who have a, their appetite is way too suppressed and stuff, there are compounds that are now like, you know, in medicinal form where they do use some sort of THC variant to actually increase your appetite. So it's, it's funny that the research shows that it can increase appetite, but it also can help suppress it too. I saw a, a trial for THC for sleep apnea, but it was also used for, I think, cancer patients who lost their appetite and it was specifically for increasing their appetite. So very interesting that it can go either way. So I want to make sure that I heard you right, because this, this is very personal for me. Sure. CBD helps you with your weight loss, not necessarily by the chemical reaction within your body, but dealing with the underlying anxiety or, or emotional eating that might be happening that, that I may or may not be frequenting. Um, is that right? Did I hear yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay. So 
if CBD can help with anxiety and anxiety is one of the main reasons why you are emotionally eating or overeating or choosing foods like your Oreos that sort of, you know, you're eating to self-soothe, but then absolutely, right? So if we reduce the anxiety, we're going to reduce the way that you're eating, right? We're going to change the way that you're eating for the better, but it goes deeper than that too, right? So poor sleep quality mm -hmm. results in weight gain, right? So less sleep in, um, causes a higher level of ghrelin. Ghrelin is that the, the hunger hormone that's in our bodies, right? I like to say G for growling, like it's a growling hormone, right? And it, it reduces the amount of lecithin, which is sort of like the feeling of fullness hormone. So everything that CBD can help with indirectly affects your weight, right? And it affects your relationship with eating. So if we can get you having better quality of sleep, then your hunger levels are gonna stay based on your hormones are gonna be under more control. CBD to help with your anxiety, the emotional eating or the overeating or binge eating behaviors can be drastically reduced, right? You can't exercise because of pain. Well, if CBD is helping with that, then all of a sudden you can be moving more. So a lot of the underlying reasons of why we're struggling with our weight in our food can often be solved with a good quality CBD product. So is that something that you need to be taking on a regular basis or can you, t you know, if you're having a bad day, you can take it before you, like you mentioned, you know, as you're leaving work or right. Is, is it something you need to take all the time uh, on regularly or can you do it at one time and still see benefits? Once you've taken CBD for a bit and you know how it works for you, I don't think that it's necessary to take it every single day to prevent a bad night's sleep or emotional eating. For people who have not been following a healthy diet or who's struggling emotionally or, or having, you know, real issues, you can't just take CBD once and assume, bam, it's fixed, mm -hmm. right? So it's a longer term process. And often because you haven't been consuming this sort of product, the receptors can become dormant. So for some people, it can take a week of using the product before they start to actually feel the product's effect. And often the effects, the feelings that you have are very subtle. So sometimes you're not even aware you're doing it until you look and realize, ah, I didn't binge on the Oreos or my sleep, you know, app is showing me that I had better quality sleep, right? Or I was in more deep sleep or I walked more steps today. So it's, it's, you can't just take it once, but I think once it's part of your routine, you don't need it then every single day. So this is, this is something that I struggle with uh, because I, I still carry a lot of the stigma in the back of my head. I know better. But a lot of times I worry that um, when I do use it, it's primarily for sleep. It helps me sleep. I get a better night's sleep. I fall asleep faster, all of that. Sometimes I worry though, is this just my crutch? Is this, I've had a bad day. I can't wait to just sort of relax and, and take, an, take the edge off, that sort of thing. So how do I balance that? How do I, how do I know that I'm not just a, a, abusing this as a, as a way to just feel better because it's because times are tough, or this is something that, that my body is truly benefiting from. And it is like taking medicine, like, like the doctor could prescribe any other anti-anxiety medicine or, or whatever. Right. And would you think if the doctor prescribed you sleep medicine or anti-anxiety medicine, that it's your crutch? You wouldn't think so, right? I mean, I, you would go home and go, oh no, the doctor said this is legit. This is what I'm supposed to do. So that's, I do wrestle with that, even though I know better. Exactly. So if we think of the broad sense and right, we're, we're currently, you know, almost a year into a pandemic at this stage, right? If CBD is the biggest crutch that you're relying on, like, holy moly, you're a rock star. Because like, <laughs> if this point. is your only issue, like we are doing really, really well, right? For that's, me, it was sourdough true. bread for like a good four months in a row, like that was my crutch. But, you know, if CBD makes you feel better, the cool thing is, is like, you can't overdose on it, right? Mm -hmm. Cannabis in general is an incredibly safe plant for most people, right? There's never been a single um, person to die of a cannabis overdose, right? Even though that's completely incorrect information that's out there. A lot of people think it is. It's, it, there's, there's not a single piece of evidence to show that someone has ever overdosed from using cannabis, but especially if you just use CBD, you know, the, the THC amounts. Like, so if this is your crutch and this works for you, I take a microdose of melatonin every night, right? So I take one milligram every night to sort of counteract the amount of blue light I'm getting, especially this last year of being on a screen more than ever. Is it a crutch? Is it a habit? I don't know. But you know what? It works for me. 
it, I don't need to increase my dose. It's one milligram has worked for me for a couple of years at this point. I think if I was getting to the point where one milligram wasn't working, then you take a break from it. But if you feel better from CBD and it makes you feel good to take it before you go to sleep, I can't imagine anyone telling you there's something wrong with that. Right. That makes sense. Can we switch to how you take CBD really quickly? I ask this for very personal reasons too, because I have a sensitivity to coconuts and coconut products. Oh. So whenever I take CBD, where I guess MCT oil or coconut oil is, is the oil of choice, right? Works for most people. Um, I have kind of a negative reaction to the MCT oil. So there's that, and that works for most people, right? Mm -hmm. But what other options are there? So th there's lots of different options out there. Our product is actually made with coconut powder, so it's not for you. Um, the cool thing about our product, and sorry, Zach, is that we are a powder. And so we turn into a non-dairy creamer for if you add a scoop of our powder into your coffee or teas or smoothies. So for those of us who don't like dairy, I take a cup of hot coffee, I put in a, normally a heaping scoop or two of my own product of daily habit in there, and then I've got this creamy drink. For people who a, don't want coconut, there's a lot of products out there, like Charlotte's Web will do something with um, olive oil, and Charlotte's Web is sort of the gold standard. I don't even consider them a competitor. They're, they, you know, they are so much bigger than me, and if I could ever be in the same room as them, I, I would just bow down. So they're an amazing product, and we have different different purposes in our businesses. But um, Charlotte's Web is often made with olive oil. There's CBD gummies. There's also pills. So there, you don't have to have that coconut if that's not your thing. I wanted to make a powder because putting oil into my mouth just wasn't my jam, right? So a lot of the tinctures are out there and whether it's olive oil, coconut oil, MCT, it just, it just didn't feel like the way I wanted to feel. And I literally wrote a book against sugar, so I couldn't make a gummy. <laughs> and the idea of making another pill you know, all of my clients have like pill fatigue, right? Like I'm already recommending magnesium supplements and vitamin D and fish oils. Like I, the idea of having to take another pill is something that I would dread. So I wanted to create a powder to make it feel like a wellness supplement instead of an illness medication. And that's why we're a powder. We're like a very wellness focused CBD supplement. But for a lot of people, you know, if it's, if it's the coconut powder probably upsets your stomach, which is very common for a lot of people. Yep. Um, there's there's tons of other options and I can give you a whole list of ones I'd recommend of brands I trust as well. That's that's what I was just going to ask you about because the the last purchase I made is a tincture. I didn't realize until I got home that it has a fruity flavor and oh my god it's one of the worst things I've ever ever put in my mouth. It's horrible. Um so when I read about your powder as a coffee because I drink I drink coffee all day long. Like oh, it's god. it gets me through. I cannot I got to try this stuff because it sounds amazing and I, and I from what I read uh, it, it sort of counters the, the jittery effects of coffee, but still allows that same clear focus that you get from, from your morning coffee. Is that, is that a fair assessment? A hundred percent. They sort of balance each other out. So it's like, if you were to drink a matcha, you know, it has L-theanine in it, which is an amino acid that sort of, sort of chills you out, but then the caffeine kind of boosts you up. So it's like a really steady focus that you get from it. So for me, um, I tend to get very like, um, sometimes anxious at my desk or um, a little bit scatterbrained. So like I'll be trying to do one thing and then all of a sudden Twitter is popping up or I'm checking this or I, I'm texting someone. When I take a big scoop of it in the morning in my coffee, I, I tend to get very hyper-focused and I'm very productive. Um, so that's why I really like it in my morning coffee. But yes. Yeah, I've, I've got to try it. It sounds amazing. As we wrap up, what do people need to know if they haven't ever considered this, they're thinking about trying it, what are some real easy entry points into, into trying this out and doing it safely? You know, I think doing some research is great. And if you go onto our website at Daily Habit CBD, we have tons of frequently asked questions. We have tons of blogs. Um, and I honestly give all my contact information so people can just email me questions, um, which, which I get a lot. And then I often use them like to inspire an Instagram post or um, a blog post to answer them because if one person has them, there's someone else that has that same question. Um, it, you know, I think it's really important. One, you need to get high quality CBD. Don't buy from a gas station, right? <laughs> like you get what you pay for. This is an expensive product for a reason. It takes a lot of processing. You want to make sure your CBD is made from organically grown hemp because hemp soaks up everything from the soil, which could be really great when it's in healthy soil. But if it's not, 
you don't want, I don't want my CBD with like a side of pesticides, just not my thing. Right. And so then also using full spectrum for most people tends to be what's most effective. So it's important to look for a full spectrum product that this way, you know, that you're getting high quality products that way too. When you're on someone's website, whether it's mine or any other companies, you want to make sure that there's transparency. So something like a COA, which is certificate of analysis or any sort of lab results, you want to know that even if you don't understand what the sheet of paper means, you want to know that companies are willing to share it. That's just the transparency that I, I sort of require in this industry. But there's tons of great brands out there. I, I, I love my brand, but it's also not for everyone. So my husband who needs super high doses to manage his pain, he'll use mine in the morning for coffee because he likes it. But, but he needs real medical doses of it. And so he takes capsules, right? And there's this great you know, uh, brand that has great pills. So it's good to know that not one brand is gonna be for everybody. And I think that's important as a business owner to admit that I am not for everyone. I can help a lot of people, but I'm not gonna fix everyone's problems. There might be a better brand for you. So I, I think looking for brands that are honest and um, transparent is really important. And don't expect it to fix anything within one use. Give it a full week. And sometimes you might notice the absence of issues versus the fix of issues. So like all of a sudden I realize, huh, I'm not overeating, right? Or I didn't binge last night, or I woke up feeling, you know, did, you know, I'm not stiff from my sleep because I was tossing and turning all night. So sometimes the changes can be really, really subtle. Um, but that's the cool part of CBD, right? All right, our thanks to Brooke Alpert, registered dietitian and founder of Be Nutritious. It's a uh, private nutrition counseling and consulting practice in New York City. And you can find out more about her product, which uh, Zach and I have both been able to uh, experiment with. You can get some at dailyhabitcbd.com. There's a link on our website. Go there, use the promo code FITMESS, and you will get 30% off your first order and worth every penny. I literally just had my first cup of coffee with her CBD product in it, and now, you know, I use, I use CBD regularly. So I, I, I'm kind of, uh, aware of what it does to my body and how I feel differently when I use it immediately. I could tell there's just this calm things just sort of evened out. And I just, I feel awesome. Normally the amount of coffee that I will have consumed at this point in my day, I'm, I'm ramped up. I'm jittery. I got to get all the work done. I got to do all the things, but I just feel good. I just feel even right now. And that's exactly what I want from a product like this. Yeah. And, and like I said earlier, I have, I've always done spot treatments to mm -hmm. CBD and I've never like taken it over the long run. This is the first time I had, had the, the, the thought of just dosing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, like right after the interview, I was surprised my sample came, I think within like two days. Wow. Um, it was really quick. And so I immediately put some in my coffee the next morning and then I had some in my tea that night for bed mm -hmm. and then the next morning had some in coffee and I didn't have tea every night, but I had every morning I had 10 milligrams with my coffee and it was a really rough week for me work-wise. Like I got, I got assigned three really big projects, one of which should take nine to 12 months. And for some reason we have to get it done in 90 days. Wow. So like pedal to the metal, get it done. And then two other big things. So like really stressful week, but I was drinking this coffee every single morning and like, you know, my anxiety, which normally runs at, you know, level 16 was pretty good this week. And I didn't actually have to use any of my management techniques. Like, you know, I was going into high pressure meetings with, without my breathing exercises mm. and I was fine. Wow. But then, but then I really liked the CBD stuff and I, I will say, she's right. This is good stuff. <laughs> Yeah. And I ran out yesterday. So today is like my first day without it. Uh -huh. And I had a meeting today that was very similar to another meeting that I had last week while I was drinking it. And I got the butterflies in my stomach and I got the nervous anxiety and the thinking and the, well, I need to prepare for this and that and blah, blah, blah. Whereas last week I was like, all right, I know my shit. Yep. I'm going to go into this meeting and I'm going to rock it. Yeah. It was a stark difference in my anxiety level while I was having this every single day. So if anything else, she just converted me to a customer. Yeah. So and and it's, that, it's that, incredible. That speaks to what she was saying toward the end of the interview is that for a lot of people, when you do use it as sort of a microdose as something you use as, as an ongoing thing, you don't notice the change as much until it, you stop. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. the, 
it's it's sort of like the you know like roller skating. You know, you're out rolling, you're running around on your skates, and when you take them off, all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, I I forget how to walk. This is weird. It's very similar. Once once you sort of have to rely on on old habits or old routines without that help, it's shocking how 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 beneficial it is. So my shipment just arrived, and so I'm just now beginning to use it in the way that she recommends. Because like I said, I use mine for for sleep. And I use a dose that I, you know, I take it and within 10, 15 minutes, I'm asleep. I'm, I'm, you know, this is not something I could do in the morning with my coffee, but, but this new product that, that she sent us, I'm really excited to try it out sort of throughout the day because like I said, I've been using poor eating and, and just bad diet to cope with a lot of my stress. And then I'm hoping that doing something like this will help me sort of stop that cycle to sort of slow down and, and realize why I'm making the choices that I'm making. Well, if it has any kind of an effect like it did on me, yes, you will slow down. I, I will say like my thinking was clear. I was taking time to like make really informed decisions. I think last week on the show, we mentioned I was on day one of the whole 30. Mm-hmm. We're on day two and it's been eight days because we broke on day <laughs> six. So... I kind of want to make one of those TikToks where it's like day one of Whole30, day two of Whole30, <laughs> day negative five of Whole30. It's like a time machine. It's so weird. It is very weird. So hopefully we have convinced you. Hopefully you feel like this is something that would be beneficial for you. If you do want to try it out, there is a link on our website. Uh, go ahead and go there, thefitmess.com. You can get 30% off your first order using the promo code FITMESS. With that, we're going to wrap things up. I got to go get some more coffee. It's upstairs in the coffee pot. You need to get more coffee and I need to order more daily habit CBD. Yes. And and I'm I'm just going to go ahead and order mine now because I know I'm going to burn through this box and, and be in the same position you're in going, where is it? I need it. So thanks again for listening. Uh, while you're at our website, please do subscribe to our newsletter so you never miss a thing related to the show. And of course, follow us on all the various social media platforms where you hang out. We will be back next Wednesday with a brand new episode at thefitmess.com. See you, everyone. We know this podcast is amazing and does not seem to lack anything, but we do need a legal disclaimer. Jeremy and Zach are not doctors. They do not play them on the Internet, and even if they did play them on the Internet, they would be really bad at it. Please consult your physician prior to implementing any changes that you heard on this podcast. The listener assumes that Jeremy and Zach do not know what they are talking about and that you will do your own research on the topics talked about on this podcast.